if you saw yesterday's painting this one this view is just slightly further on um, I think it was just over that little hill so you got the uh, the causeway pool just to the right behind us there and on the left going this way I think it's um, if you know Kingsbury it's uh, I think it's Pine Pool just a bit further down but anyway the, obviously this one's in the portrait mode for a change so we've still got the lights so I'll try and create the sort of nice bright yellowy ready sort of maybe alizarin crimson down there bendy road foreground trees another one there using the rigger so let's uh let's have a look at the materials it's all the same gear probably used to it by now got ultramarine lemon yellow Payne's grey alizarin crimson raw sienna burnt umber light red they're always in the same places so i know exactly where they are I never bother cleaning it. You don't, you don't. If you're a beginner, I'd recommend doing so. But when you're a bit more experienced, you don't really need a clean palette. Brushes, three-quarter inch flat, large hake, number three rigger. Got our water jar, bit of tissue in case we need it. Cut my watercolour tubes, and uh, I haven't put the paper on yet, but it'll be. I keep it up here. I buy it in blocks of 100. It costs about 30 quid for a pack of 100, it's 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. It's not the thickest in the world, but it, it, um, it does the job, it does the job. When I paint them I stick them up here out of the way. That's the, I don't really like that to be honest. Yeah, there's the one I did yesterday. That's the only one I've done since, but um, it's a bit of an experiment that was really. So, starting as usual, doesn't matter if it's a portrait or landscape, we still approach it exactly the same. Clear water, just so that the paper stretches nice and even, because it will crinkle otherwise if I just wet one little bit at a time. And then with that in, let's just have a bit of a mix of bit of lemon yellow, Payne's grey, I mean raw sienna, bit of light red, just bang it all in, maybe even lizarding crimson, all the bright colours. Clean the brush and then I'm going ultramarine, ultramarine, just straight in across the top there. Maybe a bit of Payne's grey as well. Make it a bit more interesting. Pushing that all the way across. No real order to it, just uh, trying to make something interesting on the paper. Something like that, I don't know. Then get a tissue, take out a bit of cloud. Don't overdo it. Just enough to make it a... Uh, just enough to give you something to think about. As with most things, if you just create just the slightest impression, just so people have to look at it and think, what's that? rather than making it obvious. Once you make it obvious, it just looks boring. You can see how it's stretching now. Actually, I've got a bit of blue tack on here I'm gonna use just to stick that corner down when uh, when it's stretched. Either blue tack or I've also got a pin. And then while that's still wet, I'll just put the uh, distance trees in. So for that, I'm gonna go I haven't cleaned the brush, Payne's grey, ultramarine, and then the horizon's going to be somewhere down here. So I'll just put in those distant trees while the uh, while it's still wet. And you can just see how you get like a nice soft edge to it. 
if that was dry now, it would be it'd be hard. You get a hard edge, and I'd, I'd rather keep that for the foreground stuff. Yeah, it's a bit higher up there, and then it goes across, and then something like that. Just vary the height a little bit. Keep it interesting. And then the right hand side, a bit more uh, closer to us. So let's stretch this. Give this paper a quick uh, pull down. Really fix it down there. And then for this bit down in this corner. You can leave this if you want more. Like I say, I'm just using a piece of blue tack. Pull it tight and then stick it down and we're nice and flat again. So we've got our background in. Distant trees. What should I do next? Um, right, now we're coming a bit closer now. Some more trees on the left, but they're a bit closer. Now looking at the uh, the uh, photograph, there's not a lot of. Well, I don't think there's, there's no green in the trees. I can see green grass, so I'm going to stay away from the lemon yellow. Stick to the uh, the colder colours, I think. Bit of burnt umber, ultramarine. And then as you can see now this foreground, this, this stuff is now in front of that distant stuff. So we want it sort of stronger mix. So it looks how the background is now going right back. And the foreground is coming right towards us. But I don't want to go all the way completely over that background. So you know almost almost sort of dry brush there, it's just coming right off nice and Nice and thick. And it's about there. A few little flicks with the uh, fingernail. Not so much. Very easy to overdo it. Just again, just give a subtle impression rather than go crazy. Now there is, I'm going to just dip into the lemon yellow there. There is a bit of green on the ground. I'm going to clean the brush, it's going a bit muddy, see it's not coming off very green. A bit too much mud, so you know that's a bit a bit more green, eh? A bit of burnt umber in there, I don't want it too green. Again. I'm just making sure I don't paint over the same bit of paper I've already painted on, so otherwise it, you don't get the variation. So that's coming right down. In fact, I'll leave that for a second. I think what I'll do next, I'll just put this path in. Path I'm going light red. Too much, too much water. Light red, ultramarine. And then we're sort of going around, doing a sort of snakey, uh, it's sort of starting off up there, and it sort of bends around, and then something like that. That'll do, something like that. But just put it in in one go. Don't keep going over and over again, because you'll lose all the sort of variations and all these broken bits where the paint hasn't touched the uh, paper. But see, now I've got a line to work to, so I can go lemon yellow, Payne's grey, ultramarine, burnt umber, and just keep varying it, just keep varying it as you come down. You know, go into a bit of everything. And see, so you get all these nice, you get a brush just full of all different colour. See all the different colours on there? So when you put the stroke in, put it in and then leave it. So if I go over that now, it'll all start to look the same. And you lose the effect that you've just uh, worked so hard to create. Also the unbroken bits of, uh, see the bit where the paper hasn't, the paint hasn't touched the paper. 
you can pretend that's bits of snow or frost or ice or whatever you want it to be. That'll do for that. Now the one thing I haven't done yet in the foreground is we've got a big tree. So I'm going, there's no point in cleaning the brush because I'm going for the dark colour now. So I'm going burnt umber, ultramarine. And then we're going to go somewhere, somewhere like that. And it's going right, right off the top. Right off the top of the page. Switch to the rigger, number three rigger, into the same mix. We want plenty of water now because this rigger do not hold much. And then just, just flick up some finer bits. Just very subtle. That'll do. That's the left hand side done. In fact, make this just make this a little bit bigger. Trying to make that look a bit more natural, just put a few little pebbles and stuff. That'll do for that. Now on the right hand side, there's going to be a bit of got a bit of light grass where this sort of sunlight is hitting it. Because a little bit, a little bit darker, a little bit more muddy, but there is also a tree, and this obviously is smaller. And this one is just going to go. I'll do for that. Don't want to go crazy. Now there's some big bushes now going up there. So again, stick to the burnt umber. Ultramarine. Using the corner of the brush, I want to get a bit lighter now, so I just want to clean the brush back into our lemon yellow so it gets nice and lighter again. Raw sienna. Raw sienna, um, burnt umber, let's make it a bit more darker again down the bottom. Burnt umber, raw sienna, pines grey, ultramarine, a bit darker down here as well. I'll make this bit darker. And 
me sort of try to emphasise a bit more of this sort of lighter area in the middle. So I'm just going to give that a quick dry. at it from an angle you can see with the light shining on it if it's dry or not. See I can look at that now I can tell that it's dry I know I'm not going to smudge it. So I think what it needs is a little figure so into the mix into pretty much anything and then Someone just walking off into the distance. I just want to keep it nice and small. Little dog. And then some kind of little shadow thing. Couple of birds. This is another one up there. And I think I'll call that one finished. Just pop your signature down in the corner, a bit darker. And that's another one. Another one finished. This is our finished painting. I'll try to create an interesting sort of path leading right into the focal point of the person there walking their dog. As I was saying earlier about subtlety, it's much better to leave like that sort of area of red there. Just a nice little subtle bit of red as opposed to overdoing it with a whole load of it. I think it always looks much nicer. And then I've tried to sort of emphasise the, the lighter area in the middle by making these bits a bit darker. A bit more shadowy. See I've not strayed too far from the composition of the photograph. All the elements are in the same place. I've just made it a bit more um, interesting I think colour wise. And then from the lighter area, up, a bit of tissue in the uh, sky always be able to make it look a bit interesting. Wait, see the little tissue bits though, obviously wait until it's dry before you start flicking those off. Well I hope you like that, thanks for watching, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.